Thank you, Senator Ernst. Let me recognize Senator Hirono and ask uh, Senator King to preside while I attend the Banking Committee. Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for your testimony today, and uh, General Fenton and Secretary Mayor, thank you for meeting with me earlier. General Nakasone, I have been deeply concerned by the state of critical infrastructure on and off military installations. Crumbling and out-of-date infrastructure lead to delays and maintenance schedules and put communities at risk for environmental disasters, as we have seen in Hawaii, but it also leaves infrastructure that is critical to our national security, but often uh, as an, uh, an afterthought, like wastewater treatment plants and pipelines exposed to cyber attacks. That is why I very much appreciated President Biden's national cybersecurity stratus, strategies focus on defending critical infrastructure, i.e. things like uh, wastewater treatment plants and pipes. How would the Department of Defense uh, collaborate with other federal agencies to implement the infrastructure goals outlined in the President's National Cybersecurity Strategy? Senator, from a cybersecurity perspective, uh, we begin, first of all, with the focus on DOD critical infrastructure. Two weeks ago, I was in Hawaii to see Admiral Aquilino uh, and to work with him in terms of looking at the DOD critical infrastructure within the islands. Uh, we work with a series of partners when requested to provide that assistance. That comes as a request for assistance from other agencies to the department of which then we would be part of that uh, assistance. Don't you think that uh, maintaining our, the physical aspects of our critical in, uh, infrastructure is a, a very important part of uh, your ability to do your mission? Certainly, we need a platform upon which to, to operate. I agree with you, Senator. And, and so what we are focused on, though, is obviously the, the cyber elements of that and then working again through the department to assist and, and answer those requests. So I think it, it's all, um, you know, we need to look at these things in a, a much more a total kind of a, uh, an aspect. That is why uh, it, it was really important for um, Admiral Aquilino to ask for an assessment of the infrastructure needs across the services in Hawaii, but I would say across the country. For, uh, again, you, General Nakasone, and uh, General Fenton, the administration's NDS identifies China as the pacing challenge for our military, and to create enduring deterrence, it is critical that we uh, remain the partner of choice in the Indo-Pacific ARR, which is why I have supported additional funding for exercises in the region and building on longstanding relationships like the Compacts of Free Association, which we are um, concluding our negotiations on. Uh, what opportunities have your respective commands had for multilateral training last year, specifically in the Pacific AOR, and how will you build from those going forward? This is for General Nakasone and Fenton. Senator, we began with uh, Cyber Flag, which is our annual uh, keystone exercise. We invited a series of partners from the Pacific, that includes Korea, that includes Australia, that includes other uh, nations within the Pacific that uh, decided to come and exercise with us. That's one piece of it. The second piece is what I had spoken to previously, which is a state partnership program, working very, very closely with Hawaii, the Hawaii Army National Guard, Hawaii Air Force Reserve and, and National Guard, to be able to assist them as they take a look at Indonesia and the Philippines, two countries that are um, that are partnered with the state of Hawaii. And so that's an area that I think has got tremendous potential in the coming year. General Fenton, I am particularly interested in really strengthening, I, I agree with your area of focus, General Nakasone, but uh, also you know, the um, Pacific Island nations, uh, such as Palau and Marshall Islands and Micronesia. Can you add to the response, please? Senator, uh, I can. I'll, I'll start with... Uh, your special operations team out there through the theater special operations uh, element, uh, SOC PAC, Special Ops Command Pacific, is, is uh, part of all the Indo-PACOM exercise events. Uh, it's very key for us because our ability to build partner and allies along with the entire Indo-PACOM team mm -hmm. uh, for your special ops is, it's a pacing item. It's very important and certainly a high priority for this nation and Secretary of Defense. Below that, we also have our own uh, uh, either bilateral or multinational special operations training events in the region or back uh, uh, in, in places around bases that we have in, in, uh, in CONUS. So our ability to, to be linked up 
with the Indo-PACOM, desired end states for partners and allies, and really enable that, plus what we bring, and it's in our nature, it's in our DNA to be a partner force of choice, uh, I think is very, very impactful for uh, uh, Admiral Aquilino and Indo-PACOM. I would say to your partnering anywhere is important to us. So to the uh, island nations, whether it be Oceania, uh, 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 Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia, your special ops team has relationships there already. Uh, some of that is not in exercise, but certainly in contact or in deployments we've had throughout the years. And we'll continue to do that and strengthen it as uh, the Indo-PACOM team and commander would want. Thank you. As my time is up, I just wanted to mention, General Fenton, that I did appreciate that in your prepared remarks, you talk about diversity of thought and background in our people as a critical enabler of the American advantage. Thank you very much. And, and you know, the <clears throat> focus on maintaining um, that kind of diversity, I completely agree with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.